Hey everybody, it's Jim from Sprague Wood Turning. This week we're going to combine some awesome designer epoxy along with some beautiful maple burl to make a one-of-a-kind large wine glass. Along with that, we'll also be doing the draw for the three-gallon kit from Designer Epoxy, and that'll be at the end of this video. All right, so in this video, uh, my, my wife said to me, can you make a large uh, wine glass that we can put the corks in from wine? I'm sure. So what I've done, I've gone ahead and did this without you. These are two plastic bowls, and all I did was run a piece of wood over the top of this one, the inner one, and then glued on another little spacer. The problem with these plastic bowls, when they sit inside of each other, there's not very much space in the bottom of it. So I want to leave, you know, a minimum of an inch for us to work with so that we can attach the stem. And I'm not 100% sure what we're going to use for stems. Uh, this is maple burl. This could be the base with the maple burl sitting on top of it like this. I do have some really nice maple burl roughed out bowls so that could be the very base of the of the wine glass and then of course the stem on top of it such as this but uh, you know we'll figure that out when we get there right now I'm going to mix up some resin and what I'm going to use is emerald green blue laguna and pearl gold along with some clear to make a really cool hopefully a really cool looking um, wine glass part of this project. Now, I'm going to be using our cast because I want some really good color separation. This is going to be about a liter of a liter and a half, somewhere around there, of a pour, so it's kind of iffy. But you know, in a way, I'm kind of hoping that a thermal cracks because then I can put some gold veining in it. But we'll see. Let's get some resin mixed up. Actually, before we mix the resin, I want to point something out. I've taped this because I'm assuming that this inside plastic bowl will float as the resin goes in. So there's that. And the other issue is I've used hot melt glue to hold things in place. And if this does heat up so much that it, you know, it's going to thermal crack, then that may melt that glue. So that's why I've put tape over top of that to make sure that this stays centered. And the other thing too is what I did was I poured rice down inside of here. And then that way we'll have a proper measurement. I just poured the rice out and then measured it and it should be around a liter and a half. So like I said earlier, we are gonna be using ArtCast. And so this really shouldn't be an issue. The only problem may be the amount of volume in that small space. And as you can see, when I poured it in, it was quite thick. It's cold in the workshop. So, you know, do yourself a favor. And if you have some nice warm water that you can set the jugs in before you use it, it will certainly help you mix it up a lot better than, than what I was dealing with. One of the reasons why I want to use Aircast is because it's super clear. I really enjoy that about it. And the other thing with it is you get really good color separation when you wait uh, the proper amount of time before blending colors. So that is the main reason why I decided to use Aircast over Deepcast. All right, I'm gonna put these in my clean room where there's heat. And then once these hit 45 degrees, we'll do the pour. All right, so we're at 43 degrees, and I think that that's probably good enough here. I don't want these things to cook off on me. So I'm just going to pour them in here randomly. I do, you know, there's still a lot of clear here, and that's because I want this to be relatively translucent, but we'll see how it goes. A mess already. It's not a very big pour area here. Thank you. 
Well, so much for the rice method. This uh, this is way off. <sighs> wow. Well, all I can really do now is probably just mix up some clear and then drop it in there and hopefully it will all kind of mix. I might take a little stick in there too to do that, but yeah, wow. But I got to hurry up before this goes off. So while I was mixing up this other resin, I went out and I put this in the snowbank uh, to hopefully cool it down so it wouldn't um, harden and looks like that has worked. Now this stuff has got a fair bit of bubbles in it so we'll see how it goes. I don't really know. I really want the full size of this though, so I don't know. I'm just going to take a stick and go down and pull that up and bring some of that color up into the clear rim area here. At least that's what I hope it's going to do. There, it looks like it's going to be a little clearer up near the rim. That may be kind of cool looking too, so. All right, I'm going to throw that in the pressure pot, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, it has been, I don't know, it's been a few days, five days maybe, so this should be good and cured and uh, very difficult to work with now. I will be very surprised if there isn't any bubbles in this, and the reason why I say that is because when I mixed up the first batch of resin, and there wasn't enough and I had to mix up more this first batch was curing and it was really it was causing a lot of air so it's going to be interesting interesting to see how much how many bubbles are in here if there are in fact any Likey. And not a bubble to be seen. That's nuts. I'm serious. When I put that in there, I thought there was going to be all kinds of bubbles. Wow. Wow. What a cool pattern that is. How awesome is that? Too bad it's on the bottom. <laughs> no thermal cracking. Awesome. Very much, very much like this. In a way, I was going to be good if there was bubbles up here because it would almost simulate, uh, you know, like champagne or something like that with the bubbles at the, near the top of the glass. But you know what? No bubbles is good too. Very cool patterns though. All right, so um, we're gonna put that aside for now. And I think what we're gonna do is mount our wooden pieces on the lathe here and get them glued up. Now, originally I was gonna use this piece here as the base. And then of course this is a stem. And I think I still will use this as the stem. But I think that I'll use this piece of burl here. This is maple burl as well. And um, got to be really careful because you've got some fissures in here, bark inclusions, that I'm assuming run all the way like this. So we'll cut a piece off in here, and that should be more than large enough for our base. So as I mark off this base, uh, basically I was looking for the base to be two-thirds the size of the bowl so that's kind of 
the measurement. I measured some <laughs> some wine glasses that we had in the house, and that was kind of where it was sitting most times. Uh, you know, very, very impressed with the Artcast. Again, when I put that in with that epoxy that was already starting to cure, it was really causing a lot of issues with me uh, trying to mix this stuff up. So my suggestion would be to either clean out that uh, container before you mix up a new batch or get another container. In the end, it worked out for me, but it certainly could have gone the other way. I really didn't want any bubbles, but you know, it's it would be one of those things that you just got to roll with the punches if it happens, but luckily it didn't in this case. Hmm. What do you think? Too tall? Plan on going about a half inch inside a uh, little mortise and tendon here, mortise and tendon here. But I still think it's too long. Yeah, you're right. Let's cut down. There, you know. I don't know. Is it? Is it too big? No, I don't think it is. Half inch into the bottom of this and a half inch into the bottom of this. That'll take another inch off the overall length of this. And I think that will be okay. We can, we can actually dry fit this. I'll turn this all together and get it glued up and turn it. And uh, ooh, don't do that. And um, then we can kind of fit it together. And if it's too long, then we can keep going down. I think. I don't know. <sighs> Decisions. I think I'm just going to leave it the way it is. As far as the length is concerned for the, uh, the wine glass, it actually, again, a rough measurement on the ones that we had in the house was basically it's the length of the width of the, the top of the wine glass. So that's kind of what I was shooting for there when I measured when I measured across the top, then you know that's that's kind of what I was doing. Trying to figure out what the how long the stem was going to be and how big the base is going to be. In the end it really boils down to a personal preference. But uh, that's my thought process on that. And by all means, go ahead and share what you think about that. So all I want to do with this piece is get it round, square up the shoulders, turn a couple tenons, and then that way we'll be able to fit it to the base when the time comes. For the base, I thought that I would use my vacuum chuck, and all I did was take the the base over to my belt sander and sanded a flat profile on the bottom of it. That way, it could be held with the uh, the vacuum chuck. And you know, if, hey, if you got it, you might as well use it. And so, all I wanted to do was kind of whittle this down, get rid of most of the wane that you see or the bark that you see on the very top of this, until I've got an area that's large enough that I can seat the wine glass stem into. So that's what I'm doing now. Now, of course, if you've got this mounted inboard, like most people would have on, on their lathes, then you could bring up the tailstock and then put whatever size uh, Forstner bit into your tailstock and then cut the little mortise and then of course then all you have to do is match the tenon to that because i'm outboard i turn it by hand you'll see that come up here in a second and you know the other thing too is it was really important to make sure that this base was flat so that when the stem went on to it that you know you didn't have any gaps so that's what i'm doing there with that sanding block and i'm just using 80 grit sandpaper from sandpaper.ca to get that done Another way around that would be to just turn a very, very slight concave 
on the surface where I'm making the tenon now. And then that way, when the stem goes into it, then you know it, it's assured to be to be flat. And I, I didn't really show it, but on the stem itself, I have a slightly um, concave surface on that too. So that when those two come together, they should pretty much create a very tight seam. So I thought that I would get myself a Christmas present. <laughs> Don't tell my wife. And uh, so anyway, this vacuum chamber is built by these fellas. Uh, it is made in China. The great thing about it is uh, it all comes, it, it comes with a, a dedicated vacuum pump, which will free up my other one that I use for my vacuum chucking. So if I'm doing any stuff in the vacuum chamber here, then I can't really use my other pump. So I'm glad that I've got another pump. I just connected everything up. It comes with the tools, got a spare little filter to go on there. Uh, you know, it's so far, it seems good. It pulled darn near 30 inches of vacuum, which my other one is not able to do, which tells me that maybe it might need to be built. As you can see, it's a little bit taller than my existing one. One of the problems with this one is that it's the lid is all starting to get, I don't know, the, the resin is eating away at it. And I don't think that it's the resin from Designer Epoxy, it's the stabilizing resin, which is what you pretty much would use in these vacuum chambers. So this one is bigger around, uh, this is nine gallons. And I just tried a, um, a five gallon bucket to see if it would fit in there. So if you were to cut down the five gallon bucket by about this much, you'd be able to put it inside of here and be able to do an entire five gallon bucket. So that's cool. You'd never be able to do it with this because it's not uh, near the same height. I don't know how many gallons this is. I bought this a long time ago. Uh, so anyway, I think that I really like the fact that it's got its own vacuum pump and it's not tying up the other one that I use on my lathe. So, you know, overall, it went together easy. Um, no issues at all, really. Uh, I was under the impression that I was gonna get the oil for this, but it didn't come with the oil. It shows in the photo putting oil in it, but I guess they're not supplying it. So I, I had some air compressor oil, so I threw that inside of it. I'm assuming that that's the same sort of oil. But anyway, it, it works awesome. I'll plug it in here for you. So yeah, there you go. That's uh, 29 and a half inches of vacuum. And I actually, if I had left it on a little longer, probably would have gone to 30. It is mean China, so, you know. But my other vacuum pump will not turn, will not pull that much vacuum, so. All right, I thought that I would share that with you. We will see this in the future and we'll put it through its, uh, through its paces to see how it performs. All right, let's get back to this week's project. Look everybody, what's this foreign substance? It's wood glue. Something we don't use very often here. What I'm gonna do is glue this together and then use my drill press as the clamp to tighten up this joint while we're working on the glass part of this piece. Tight Bond 3 is a good choice for this and the reason for that if you've got the time to use it, then it's a good choice, but it is waterproof. And that's the main reason why I like to use Type Bond 3. And the drill press is actually a good choice for clamping this because, of course, you can lower it as far as you want. And I uh, use it all the time for stuff such as this. Works great. Here I'm placing the glass part of the wine glass into the coal jaws. And the reason for that is because I want to put a glue block on the bottom of this. 
That way I can flip it around and turn it outboard and I have access to the inside and the outside of this piece. So once it's flattened, then I take some 60 grit to give uh, the hot melt glue that I'm putting on there now a good tooth to bond to with my waste block and my homemade face plates. And then, you know, I usually wait about 15 minutes or so. It's probably going to depend. It's, it, like I said earlier, it's cold in my workshop. Uh, by the time, you know, I go out and I put a fire on, and by the time that things get warmed up, you know, it's, it's probably close to noon or even later. So that's why you'll see me wearing a coat sometimes and not maybe the wood stove has kicked in by then. So, you know, out near the rim after using the cold jaws, it was probably off about an eighth of an inch. I could have probably eyeballed it, but, you know, better safe than sorry. So just going to true up the outside and the inside to this this piece to, you know, the, the dimensions that I'm looking for. You will see me pretty much do the resin piece here and finish it out, except for the finish being sprayed onto it. But, man, we got some really cool patterns in this piece, and I'm really stoked about that. And, you know, I, I really like the fact that dumping in more of that clear at the very top of this pour gave it more of a glass look. So, you know, it's funny how things just kind of work out because I, when I was seriously mixing up that resin, I was like, man, there is a ton of bubbles in this. Now, I don't know. So that went into the pressure pot and I don't know what it would have been if it had enough. So that, that's another reason to get a pressure pot. And if you do get any bubbles in your resin, the idea behind it is that it shrinks them bubbles so small that they're hard to see. And it also pushes it into areas where it ordinarily wouldn't flow. So that's why, you know, if you're using the vacuum chamber with resin and then you go to the pressure pot with it, you know, there's really, you'll get really great results. And that's why I recommend people getting both the vacuum chamber and the pressure pot. I do get asked a number of times, uh, you know, if, if I could, you know, these pressure pots and these vacuum chambers, you know, they're not cheap and, you know, neither is resin. So, you know, People ask me, you know, if if I was only going to pick one, which one would it be? And that's that's a very tough question to answer because I've never actually put art cast into um, the vacuum chamber, so I don't really know how it's going to behave. I've done a lot of deep cast in there, and it has worked flawlessly. But art cast has a much sh shorter open time, so you know, and and this is where you get your color separation. And so, you know, I, I just don't really know how that would react in a vacuum chamber if you used a lot of it. Uh, I know that, you know, you're not supposed to really leave it in cups very long because it will, you know, it'll thermally go off and, and cure. So, you know, um, it's a real toss up for me. When this piece went into the, to the pressure pot, it was full of bubbles. And I mean, lots of air in the second pour and it came out flawlessly. So, you know, you can't really argue with those results either so you know i'll leave it up to you um but i guess really if if i if i was forced to make a decision i probably would just use the vacuum chamber and then set it on the bench but you know the two of them are so much better together so if you can swing the cost of the two of them i really do highly recommend getting both I should also mention that we are using the Hercules here. This is the number three, then the five eights one, which is, you know, there, there, there's two types of Hercules. There's the number one, um, geez, I don't know the, the size of the shaft, but later on in this video, I will compare them and you'll see how much more robust the number three is. So that's the one that I like to use. And again, it just works flawlessly on resin projects. Finally, on the sanding, these are the three and a half inch dimple discs from sandpaper.ca, and I'm sanding from 60 to 800. That's typically what I do on all my resin pieces. And then after that's done, move on to buffing and then cleaning with denatured alcohol. So here's the Triple E buffing compound from the Be All Buffing System. And if you haven't been here before, the goal with this stuff is to just take all those little tiny little scratches out of the work prior to any finish going on. And there's the denatured alcohol, removing any of that residue. You certainly don't want that left on the surface of that resin. 
especially if you're going to spray anything on it. She's a beauty. I actually think that there's probably going to be some people say, hey, those look like peacock um, colored pieces for your hollow form. So why not use the art cast? And you really can't use it because, you know, I, it's not a deep casting epoxy. So I'll need to um, not be able to use this. We're going to have to use the deep cast. But it is still in the queue. Um, 3.0 will be coming up at some point. Don't know exactly when, though. Now that we've got the base flattened, I'm just making a little mortise for the the stem to go into. You should note the router padding. I did use that on the, the surface of the cold jaws just to help with preventing marking from the, the buttons that hold on to the, uh, the piece. So, you know, it's, I don't know, it, maybe it wasn't necessary, but I wasn't real keen on that finished top surface resting on that aluminum either so that was another reason why i use that router padding so i'm just sizing this mortise until we can get it lined up with the stem and then that way we can glue it in place we're going to use the thick here uh, the reason for that is because i need to get going with this project or it's going to be late so i'll put the thick ca glue here from starbon on the wood piece, lots of it, lots of squeeze out, and then I'm going to use the accelerator and spray it on the bottom of the wine glass. Just hold it for a second and it should be good. There, I'll let that sit for probably 10 minutes and then we'll shape the foot and then hopefully get our first coat of finish on here. For all the wooden pieces on this, for the most part, I stick to the 5 8 bowl gouge from David Ellsworth. You will see me use a little bit of the Hunter Tools Systems tools on the wood, but for the most part, I, I leave those for the, you know, any of the resin areas on this piece. But the 5 8 bowl gouge, it's really tough to get your, your tool rest in there to use any spindle tools. So, and the other thing too is, that burl, I find that, you know, it cuts a lot better with the bowl gouge than it does with a spindle roughing gouge or, you know, a spindle gouge, period. So that's why I, I use the bowl gouge and it's, you know, it's something that's very familiar to me as well. So that's another reason why I stuck with it. Here's the difference in the two Hercules tools. I had Mike uh, sent me the smaller one just to show the comparison on here. Uh, but I really was looking forward to using this small one in little tight areas like you see up there. I find that a lot of times the 5 eighths uh, wide one is just a little too robust to get in there and, and do those areas. So that's why I want the smaller Hercules as well. All right, so I turned off one of my bright lights so we can see. Oh, geez, there's some pretty deep fissures in this. I wasn't expecting that. So, you know, I'm going to try something a little different. Uh, usually I use the thin and what I think that I'm going to do is actually use the thick again 
And then I'm just going to put it in a couple of these little Dixie cups here. And what I think I'm going to do is use some Blue Laguna and some gold pigment right in with it. And uh, hopefully this will kind of blend in and look cool. But uh, I guess we'll find out here. I want to mix the pigments pretty strong. And then I'll set it with the accelerator. That way I can move around. Actually, while we're waiting for that one to sink in a little bit more, put some Blue Laguna down on this one. Now, I noticed these before, but geez, I didn't think they were going to be this bad. They seem to get worse uh, the deeper we went into this piece. To be quite honest with you, I probably could have used the UV resin here now that I have the, the proper uh, UV light to cure it. Uh, but I was really curious to see how this thick CA glue would work as well. And this is kind of the shape I'm going for. I wanted to do this before I basically got right down to, I mean, really I'm only going to take maybe a sixteenth of an inch off of this. And uh, so anyway, I didn't want to wait until I had my final profile before doing this. Just try and push that down inside. There you go. I guess I'm going to call it a day. Uh, i got a hockey game to watch anyway. Canada's playing Slovenia. We'll uh, pick this up tomorrow. She might rub a little bit in there too. The other benefits of using the thick CA here is the fact that you can use it on vertical surface like I am here and it doesn't run like the thin stuff does. All right, now we'll see you tomorrow. Another reason why I went in this direction with the CA glue and not the UV resin is because the UV resin, when you put it on a vertical surface like that, you know, it takes a little bit of time to use the UV light to cure it. And in all likelihood, it probably would have run out. I didn't want to take this piece off the lathe because it was running nice and true. So, you know, that's, that's kind of why I went in that direction and didn't use the UV resin. So I showed my wife this last night and she didn't like this and she wanted just a smooth transition. But as you can see, that's not going to work. Uh, I forgot that, you know, I was dealing with the tendon. I knew there was a reason why I left this large down here, but you know, I don't know. So now I think all I can do is bring the tailstock up turn another tenon on here, get another piece of wood. And now that, you know, we're basically hitting the reset button on the bottom here, uh, this really doesn't go with this. Lots of really strong burl eyes in this and really nothing in this. So maybe I'll try and find a piece that better suits this, but anyway. Let's uh, get a tendon on here and then we will try this again.
All right, so here's another piece of burl. All I did was flatten it on my belt sander and then use a uh, 1 and 1 16th inch Forstner bit to drill the hole. Uh, just easier that way. This should match a little better. It's not real strong burl eyes. There's some parts where there isn't, so hopefully it will match. But, you know, I've got some bar conclusions that I'm going to have to fix. So, you know, same old, same old. So again, uh, this time I'm just going to use the thick CA glue from Starbon and the accelerator. There, that's a good tight joint. I'll let that sit up for about 15 minutes and then uh, we'll get back at it again. So, I mean, yeah, I wasn't, you know, I was okay with that profile, but, you know, as soon as she pointed it out to me, I was like, yeah, it'd be nice to have a smooth transition down there like you see on most wine glasses. But, uh, of course, this isn't most wine glasses. <laughs> so, uh, it's just one of those uh, live and learn moments. Uh, and, again, there is just a ton of things to fix on the bottom of this now. So, it did certainly add a lot of work to the project and... Really just added probably a couple hours to the job. So, you know, it's not really that big of a loss. But, you know, I left that thick for a reason. And it just, you know, at the time, I was like, yeah, yeah, we can whittle that off. And like, nope, we sure can't. All right, same process as before. I've got some Blue Laguna and some Pearl Gold and thick CA glue. And I'm gonna put a little bit of, well, I'm gonna first of all spray the accelerator in there first and then pour a little bit in and spray it and pour a little bit in and mix a little bit of gold in with it. And, you know, hopefully that will work. The great thing about the thick stuff is that it doesn't typically foam like the, uh, the thin stuff does. So it's a good application for here. I really debated on using the UV epoxy. Uh, the only problem with that is I don't know, like I, I need something to contain it. And if the epoxy is tinted, I'm a little worried that maybe it won't uh, set properly. So that's why I'm using this, the the uh, thick CA glue if you're curious. The other issue is the fact that I need to make a dam for this and you know if it was sitting flat on the bench then you could maybe use the the UV light on the very top of this but since you know you, you're using basically tuck tape on either side of this I just don't think that I would have been able to use the UV resin. Uh, I never contacted them to ask them. I probably should have. There, we'll just let that sit. Probably 15 minutes and then we'll get back at it. I was having some curing issues deep down in the center of this piece. That's why you'll see me filling it again and hitting it with the accelerator. Uh, again, you probably could have used the um, quick cure here as well. But, you know, I just didn't have the time. I This thing was really starting to run late on me and I was really worried about not getting it done in time. So that's the main reason that I went in that direction. Uh, we will certainly use the UV uh, epoxy in the future and along with the quick cure as well because I think they're both great products too. In the last clip, I wanted to make a little, well not a little, it's actually a fairly large mortise so that, you know, that basically the base is sitting on a ring. And here I'm just taking some final little cuts uh, before doing any sanding. I tried some shear scraping. Uh, getting down deep in there is, is really tough. 
that there's the scoochie gouge again. And then there I've got the small uh, Hercules just touching up the, the foot and actually we're quite nice. I did do a fair bit of hand sanding on the wood on this piece here. And so what, if you look at the bottom of the, the glass. So what I did was I started sanding at 60 and then worked my way through the grits. And I proceeded to go just up the wine glass a little bit further with each grit. And then that way, by the time you get done, it would all be blended in and you'd never know. There I did see a tiny little hole. So I, I figured that I would fill that with the clear CA glue. And uh, again, I don't know how you can be a wood turner and not use CA glue. Uh, it's just, to me, is is absolutely a fantastic product. And, you know, I'm, I'm really glad that it's in my inventory because, you know, I just don't know how you can be a wood turner without it. I really don't. There you can see, doing some power sanding. The great thing about those dimple discs is those dimples hanging over the edge. You can get into tight little areas. And it works actually quite nice. And there I am progressing up the wine glass with each grit. Last little thing is to just cut this free from the lathe. I didn't, I left the tailstock in place. That is hanging off of the bottom of that glass pretty far. And you can see that the base gets a little wobbly when I take it away. So all I did was sand after the little piece was taken away. And then that way, you know, there was no things being pulled off of the, the wine glass deal because nobody wants that. My solution to finishing this piece is to use my vacuum chuck like you see me doing here. I did tape off the neoprene area because I didn't want any finish to get on the chuck and on the neoprene seal. And I've decided to go with this Rust-Oleum. I've had this sitting in my cupboard and I'm saying, oh, I'm going to give this a shot and see what it does. And I'll be honest with you, I'm very impressed with it. It covered really nicely. Got to be really careful with it because it says two times the coverage and that is a correct statement. You'll see me wipe off some here and there because I got too much on, but it sets up really, really fast. And you can actually put on a number of coats in one day. I think they say to wait uh, between 30 minutes between coats. My main concern was to just make sure that you had a shiny finish and not um, orange peel surface. There I'm pointing out that, yeah, this stuff really covers quite a bit, so be careful. And, uh, you know, overall, I'm really happy with it. Well, I must say that I think that stuff worked pretty good. <laughs> I'm actually kind of surprised. Uh, wow. That resin is spectacular. I love it. And check out the how clear that art cast is. Amazing. So I found that, you know, it, it spread quite nicely on the resin part, but down on the wood, it would kind of, there'd be some spots where it was dry and it was wet and you try and spray it again. And so I think that I'm gonna let this set up and then when I spray it tomorrow, just the base, I don't think we need another coat on the bowl. It's actually pretty nice. So uh, anyway, we'll talk a lot tomorrow. See you then. This is the next day and I'm using 4.0 steel wool to just take away any fuzziness that may be on the surface of the wood. I did find that it did lift um, the grain a bit. So that's why I'm doing that. You'll see that I do get the signature on the very bottom, as you see right there. So I was able to spray the whole bottom. Now, I figured that I wasn't going to be able to spray just the wood and not get it on the very bottom of the wine glass. So I decided to put a coat on the bottom of the wine glass as well. But the good thing is I was able to actually put some finish on the very bottom of this piece as well. All right. So since we're over 80,000, let's go and pick a winner for the three gallon kit from Designer Epoxy. These are the names that the random YouTube comment picker has selected. There were 17 videos since the last three gallon giveaway of Designer Epoxy. I have excluded the tractor video. So there are 16 videos. These are the names that have been selected. As you can see, there's two Forever Turner Peter Kipfer and two 
Gene Callahan's. So, you know, odds are in their favor, but you never know. Let's pick a name. Okay, so here are the 16 names. And what I'm going to do is put it in this little pine cone. Lit a dish, if you remember. Yes, I kept the base. I did not remove it. So we'll just put this on here. Give her a shake. Yeah, nice base. I, I actually really glad I kept this. I suppose you guys want to know who the winner is. So the winner of the three gallon kit from Designer Epoxy, <laughs> odds have it, Rev Returning Peter Kiffer. You are the winner of the three gallon kit from Designer Epoxy. And I know that Peter comments on every video, so thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of videos. It took quite a while to get to uh, 10,000 more subscribers, but going into Christmas, I knew that things would slow down. That's how it's been the last couple of years anyway. So congratulations, Peter. Send me the uh, your details to spragwoodturning at gmail.com and I will forward to Designer Epoxy and we'll get your kit mailed out to you. All right, let's talk about this week's project. So it'd be interesting to see what people are gonna say about this. I, I actually really like it. <laughs> I, I didn't think that I was going to when, when my wife wanted this and I was saying, I don't know if I wanted it. But anyway, it seemed to work out quite well. Now, I never noticed this until today, but there is a ring around the inside from where it was held on with the vacuum shock. So I don't know if that's because, probably because the finish wasn't cured up enough before I used it, and it may buff out because it feels like it's proud of the surface. So regardless, if I have to use a little bit of 4 steel wool, or I might even just buff it out and see what it looks like after that. If not, I'll put another coat of finish on it and then it will be done. There's the bottom. I know I didn't really show that. And uh, yeah, fun project to do. Again, with the CA glue, the thick CA glue, that worked quite well too. Just, you know, really wanted to try that UV resin, but you know, making these dams and so it's gonna block the UV light from going in and curing it. And there was just a whole lot of issues there. That's why I didn't use it. Certainly could have used a quick cure, but this stuff was faster and I just had to get this done. It's just a matter of time. This resin, I mean, it is just, I, I'm like absolutely, totally happy with this. I didn't think that, you know, it's pretty much exactly what I was going for, which uh, a lot of times with resin isn't the case. <laughs> so I'm um, really happy with this. If you're curious, nine and a half inches across and 10 and a half inches tall, that's, the size of this. Now I left it large up here. There's going to be some people wondering why that is. And again, that's to support the uh, where the glass part, resin part, goes into the wood. So that's why I left it like that. Unlike down here, down here is fine. It's the transition is maybe a little cleaner. So you know I'm I'm, I'm relatively happy with that as well. And again, that colored. CA glue fits well with the piece as well. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, congratulations again, Peter. Uh, you know, it's been, it's been great. Uh, again, so as we go into the new year, I'm hoping to bring some new and exciting content. So please come on back for that. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing that. Next week, we will do the draw for the 80,000 giveaway bowl or whatever I'm gonna make, because I. Well, I still don't know what I'm going to make, so that'll be next week. Um, like I said, I haven't, I'm still going to do the Peacock Hall of Form 3.0, so that's still, you know, on the list of things to do because I certainly do not want to give up on that because that's not in my character. Uh, again, thanks again to Designer Epoxy for, first of all, supplying the three-gallon giveaway and supporting my channel. I really appreciate it. 
And of course, if you need anything else from any of the other sponsors, it's in the description down below, along with a bunch of Amazon links as well. Uh, and a lot of the products that you see down there is the stuff that I use here in the shop. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, hopefully we have a great year going forward. Uh, the weather's turned really miserable here. I gotta go out and snow plow again. Be nice if my tractor worked every time. Lots of issues with that. So I seem to be working on it more than on that lathe right there. That's the way it's been going with that thing. But anyway, I'll get it sorted out. All right, well, that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Take care, stay safe. Don't forget the bell. Congratulations, Peter. See you next week. Don't forget to share my videos. I appreciate it.